There's a new play premiering tonight on NNR, and the artistic director and the playwright is Jack Kenfora, and we have him with us here today before the big premiere tonight. Jack, tell us a little about, bit about NNR. What is it? How did you start it? Why sure. Start it? Uh, NNR stands for New Normal Rep, um, which is a title, um, you know, we like the title. I, I wish I could take credit for it, but... Uh, well, actually, I will take credit for it. Let's just say I came up with it. But actually, uh, our, our friend Michael Tucker came up with it. Um, in April, right, right around April, I guess, when, the pan when most of us started to realize that the pandemic was not going to go away anytime soon, um, I reached out to a group of uh, friends of mine who were theater artists whom I'd been lucky uh, enough to work with before, who were all very good actors, but also really people I wanted to see. And we uh, decided to read a play every week. Every Thursday night, we get together and read a play, and it could be any play from Shakespeare to Neil Simon to everything in between. And, um, and uh, you know, it was, you know, partially to kind of keep our theatrical muscles sort of in shape, but mostly just to sort of see each other and connect. And, you know, that was a time in particular where that felt incredibly hard to do and incredibly important. And um, we really uh, gelled. I mean, I, 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 got lucky in the people I picked. We, you know, many of whom knew each other, but many of whom didn't. I was sort of the common denominator. Uh, but everyone really got along well. And after a while, it occurred to me that we had a, the makings of a really strong ensemble. And as time went on and on, um, I thought, you know, and the theaters, you know, so they wouldn't be open anytime soon. Um, and I started seeing some people doing some basic Zoom reading which I applauded and thought was great, although I didn't always love the aesthetics of it. Um, and people, you know, people are Zoomed to death, you know, um, apart from this, they love this. But, uh, but in general, uh, what I wanted to do is present plays, uh, not as readings, but as performances. And obviously we're constricted by the format to, to a degree, but uh, we wanted to explore the format too. What we found is that the format <clears throat> I mean, is actually in a weird way more intimate than television or movies or theater because you're you're so close to the actor. And while I am you know, a theater, I'm a playwright and I'm a theater guy and I can't wait for theater to come back. Um, I, I don't think this format's going to go away right away. I think it's 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 a it's kind of a brand new hybrid, and I think it's. Yeah, I think it's starting to find its feet. And for all of its technical disadvantages, it offers some other advantages too. Namely, people can see a play everywhere. You don't have to be in New York or Chicago or what have you. Um, and so I approached a couple of the actors in the company, uh, in, well, company in, the, in, in our reading group, whom I knew and, and respected very much, uh, and said, what do you think about trying this? And... Um, uh, you know, to my great happiness, they were very uh, enthused about it. And then we, uh, one of the first people we approached was Jill Eikenberry, who was also in our reading group. Jill was in a play of mine off Broadway a few years ago. In fact, Jericho, which is the play that's going to open tonight. Did I see Jericho at 59 East 59? Well, I haven't been following you, so I don't know, but it's entirely possible. Uh, it ran in 2013 or 2012. Uh, it starred Jill Eikenberry, among others. Um, and, Who else you know, was in it? Who else was in that version? Uh, well, actually, half the cast who's going to be in the version of Jericho tonight is in it. Uh, uh, Eleanor Handley, Carol Todd, uh, but Jill Eikenberry, I think, is the most common, you know, the most well-known name uh, of the group. Um, and it it did very well and got a very nice reception. And that's actually why we decided this. One of the reasons we decided to start with this play was that there are so many variables going into uh, a new medium in a, in a brand new theater company that we wanted to start with the script that we felt had, had generally been well received before. So at least that wasn't going to be an X factor so much. Was this the play that took place in a farmhouse? No. Okay. No, no, although you give me an idea for a new play, so thank you. But um, no, it takes place uh, in Manhattan and also on uh, suburban Long Island, Jericho, Long Island. 
and it deals with two characters in particular who are in the aftermath of, of 9-11. Um, it's set in 2005. It's not, uh, it's not really a play about 9-11 per se. Um, and in fact, I really resisted that labeling for a long time because I felt that there was nothing you could really write about it, uh, especially that soon thereafter that was gonna have much to say other than how horrible it was. Uh, I didn't think there was much of a way in ways of making some sort of interesting statement about it. In fact, Evan Bergman, my fr the man who directed it off Broadway, had to sort of sit me down and say, you know, it is a little bit about 9-11. <laughs> it's okay to admit that. Um, but ultimately, I think it's about relationships uh, who are, that are undergoing great stress and trauma and a search for a um, sense of community and belonging, which uh, many of the cast members um, who read it, who performed it a few years ago, uh, were commenting as we started rehearsals that it, it seems oddly, if anything, more relevant now uh, than it did then, uh, because I think during the pandemic, we've been so, we felt so isolated that, that our need for um, real connection is, is you know, and uh, in, in, it, in our la missing it is uh, such a profound feeling. Uh, and that's one of the play, the things the play uh, deals with. Um. You have Marsha Mason directing this. I do. How did she become involved? I, you know, I'm still pinching myself over that one. She, she knows Jill. Uh, Jill sent her the script and said, would you be interested in, in doing this? And Jill and Marsha fortunately uh, responded very well to the script and said, I would be interested in it. And we spoke briefly and I, and I said to her, you know, um, you know, I think you in particular would be a great choice for this play because, um, you know, one of Marsha Mason's great strengths as an actor and as a director is that she is so brilliant at mining the comedy from real drama and even in, in comedic moments, keeping the dramatic stakes high. And so it's a dramatic play, but there are hopefully many funny moments in it. But you never want it to get jokey or, you know, or, or to lose one at the expense of the other. So she was really the perfect person to do it. So I knew going in when she'd agreed that we were in great hands artistically, but I was really pleasantly shocked at just, you know, she may be one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And uh, so down to earth and so uh, unassuming and just what a great collaborator. I just, uh, it was just a dream come true. I honestly didn't know she directed until I got this press release. Yeah, um, <clears throat> she spent a fair amount of time directing recently, and uh, she she I'll say this: I think she directs as well as she acts. So <laughs> that's that's a pretty good. I can't think of higher praise than that. Now that's a great combination. If you could uh, write on any subject, or if there are subjects that you haven't written about, what are they? Well, you know, I got to tell you, my as a, as a playwright, I mean, I've been sort of all over the map. I've written about all different types of subjects. I've written about, um, uh, I've applied a play down at Bay Street a couple years ago about the relationship between Arthur Miller and Ilya Kazan and Marilyn Monroe. Um, I've written about um, uh, uh, factory shut down in the Midwest. I've written, my, my subject matter tends to be fairly scattered. And um, one of the hardest things for me to do as a playwright is to find something that I want to write about. Um, and I can't go looking for it. I try sometimes, but if I try to go looking for it, it usually doesn't get me anywhere. It just has to sort of like grab me and there's this little like chill I get and I think, oh, I think I can write about this. And um, Jericho is the first, is the, one of the only plays I've ever written in which I didn't have a plot in mind per se. I had an idea that I wanted to discuss um, and think about. And I was reading a lot at the time about um, people, I, I grew up on Long Island, um, a lot of fellow Long Islanders who were, who were Jewish and many of whom very secular, um, who were having these sort of epiphanies and moving to Israel and, and changing their lives entirely and bringing their children there. And, I, and to me, it was, it was an incomprehensible thought. And I thought, well, what? I wonder what compels someone to, to just change their lives so radically. And I found that idea very interesting. And what I 
in my amateur psychologist uh, theory came to be that I think it says at least as much about what's missing in America as what's present elsewhere. Uh, and that to me felt like a sense of real community. Um, I mean, we felt, we felt pretty fractured, you know, I guess starting by the Iraq war, uh, in two, really, even going back before then, 2000, but now of course it's exponentially so. And well, so- I also think it's feeling betrayed by mm -hmm. what you always thought you wanted. Right, so yes. I think it's feeling that you're moving on in a different place. Right. I think we all do that at different stages of our lives. Mm -hmm. I also think that it's uh, maybe the grass is always greener. Well, I think that's true. And, and to touch on your point, which I think is a great point, is that moving on and, and evolving and wanting different things, the problems that arise when the people you've built your life with don't evolve in the same direction. Absolutely. And, the, uh, and, and, and really the, the heartache and the trauma that comes from that. Um, yeah, a lot of trauma that comes with that. I can I can state that personally. <laughs> Me too. And so um, that was one of the things that that was at the heart of what I wanted to write about. So when I said earlier that Jericho is not a play about 9/11, uh, what I meant was that that was the in what they call the inciting incident that triggered these people in these directions. Um, I mean, I have nothing interesting or intelligent to say about this socio-political nature of, you know, uh, the, geo, uh, the geopolitics of 9-11. And that's not my intent. It's just to explore people's relationships and how they react to trauma and how within themselves and with those they care about. Now, it's premiering tonight. It is at 7 o'clock. Start streaming tonight through April 4th. Um, and it, you know, it is, you know, you can buy your ticket and you can watch it anytime you want. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're very excited about it. We're very excited about it. What would you like people to take away from seeing this play? Hmm. Uh, well, I mean, I hope, and this is going to sound glib, but I, I, I think my first job as a writer is to entertain an audience. And that doesn't necessarily mean something shallow. I just want them to feel like they've had spent a couple of hours, you know, well. Uh, and uh, I mean, New York is all about oh, if you're entertained, it's not theater or drama. Right, exactly. And right. I think yeah, That's bullshit. Yeah, I, well, yeah. I mean, I think I mean, like to me, King Lear is very entertaining. But I, I mean, it's the different kinds of entertainment, right? Uh, not right. Not, the, not that I've written King Lear. I want to lower the expectations there, but <laughs> but um, I I think I'd want to take if anything you know and again i think a writer's job isn't really to give messages i think it's to ask questions oh and i, I think, so agree with this yeah and I so i'm manipulated in a play yeah i mean listen if i felt i had the answer to things i would be out on the lecture circuit and writing self-help books and, and making a lot more money but i think as as a writer my impulse is to wrestle with questions that interest me and hope that and hopefully in an entertaining way that I think might interest other people too. And the questions I think people come away, will come away from with Jericho are, well, what does it mean to be a part of a community? What constitutes a community? What constitutes a real connection with both ourselves and, and uh, our partners, our friends, our family members? Um, and is that enough? Is that ultimately enough just to be part of a small little chain to what degree are we all connected isn't that what we strive for yes we hope right we hope now i have to ask this tell us about the guitars and the picture on your wall well the the picture on the wall was painted by a former student of mine uh which you know i was very touched by and i thought an appropriate place would be to uh hang it by the guitars there's another guitar behind me um and uh i am a, i'm a bit of a guitar player um and uh, I, you know, I started out when I was a teenager, really, I was, I, was, I was into writing songs and I really wanted to be John Lennon or Elvis Costello, but both of those jobs were taken. So uh, I, you know, I realized I wasn't going to be that. And so I eventually morphed into playwriting and I, via acting actually, but, um, but I've always been sort of an avid amateur musician. Now, what actors and 
directors would you like to work with? Who would you like to see do one of your plays? Well, do you have a dream list? You know, I don't. I'm terrible at that. I'm like surprisingly bad at that. Um, so, uh, I mean, I will say this, that um, uh, and I've had the chance of working with some very, very good actors. I've worked a little bit with Jack O'Brien. I've worked with Michael Wilson, who was wonderful. Uh, Marsha Mason, I really hope to work with again. Um, I Anyone who just values uh, text and uh, language and, and, and character, uh, there are so many great actors. Um, you know, there's too many to list. Like Bill Nye is, is, is one of my dream actors. He, he is incapable of not being interesting, uh, I feel. Um, but there's so many. I mean, what I've started to do a little bit, you know, in this company that we've formed, um, uh, Eleanor Handley, who, who plays the central character in this play, has been in a couple of plays of mine. I've known her now for, for about eight years. In fact, I met her because she was doing Jericho in a production in Florida. Um, and so I've started to write plays where occasionally I will say, oh, this is an Eleanor character. And, then, and I, I, so I never write with actors in mind, but when I occasionally do, it makes it much easier because I now have her voice in my head. Uh -huh. And I just finished writing a play uh, with, not with, but uh, in sort of in conjunction with, uh, with uh, a great Canadian actor named uh, Garrett Wynn Davies. He, he's uh, one of the lead actors at the Stratford Festival in Canada. And if anyone is familiar with the theater, uh, the uh, television show, Slings and Arrows, um, and if you're not and you like theater, you should be, it's a great show. Um, he's one of the characters in that. And so, um, yeah, I just love to work with people who, you know, bring empathy and sensitivity to their their roles, you know, particularly, I like to write complicated characters who um, mean well, but don't always succeed in doing so. <laughs> you know, I guess it's right what you know. <laughs> um, exactly. Um, tell us how people can watch Jericho tonight. Oh, very good question. Uh, you can log on to our website, which is www.newnormalrep.com. Dot org. Um, and the website, which is put together by one of our actresses, who is supremely brilliant, Carol Todd, but also apparently a great web designer, we found out. Uh, and you can click on tickets. Uh, and it's, it's very straightforward about buying a ticket for tonight, or you could become a patron, uh, which means that you get uh, tickets to all we to all the shows in our season right now, which is at this moment is four, maybe five. We'll see what happens. Uh, but also they get extra goodies. They'll, we'll be doing monthly staged uh, Zoom readings of, of new plays. Uh, we'll have small little um, sketches or monologues or things such as that that will, uh, so it'll be extra content for the uh, patrons. If you wanna learn more about New Normal Rep, Go to their website. They have an entire series of plays, and you can now see new plays by new authors, ones that you don't know, and you can discover the world of theater. Yes, as well as a few well-known plays, too. Our next play is actually by Nilo Cruz, who's directing it. Uh, his own play is going to star Jimmy Smits and Daphne Rubin Vega, and so we're very excited about that, too. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah, we're very happy. Thank you so much.